Hello everyone, Christopher Beast here, and in today's video we will be examining what weapon frequency in Season 12 looks like, what this means for the game, and what to look out for going into the future. Before I begin, huge shout out to BBS here, or Bad But Sweaty. He is the guy who gathered the vast majority of this data, and without him this video would never be possible. Make sure to check him out if you haven't already, and I'll have a link to his channel in the description below. So with really no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> To start off, frequency tells us more about the game than really any other data, and because of that it is possible for me to talk about everything, but I just don't have the time to do it here. So this video will only focus on the important parts of what we learn from this frequency data, and for today, those important parts are how bad is the M249 meta, what was the effects of the elimination overhaul on encounters, and finally, how successful was the machine gun overhaul, and was it acceptable data-wise. So let's start off with the M249. The data clearly shows it is the meta gun, without really any shadow of a doubt. It is currently the most used gun in the game. However, to consider how bad of a meta it is, we must consider some other stats and do some comparisons. First up, the M249 makes up 5.98% of total usage, making it the number one gun in the game at the moment. This number is actually quite a bit low though for a meta weapon, at least in recent times. To give some sense of scale, the L85 last season was not really easily the meta weapon, and there was definitely some hitback on that title for it, and it acquired 6.65% of usage. The SG-1 in Season 8, a clear meta weapon, had 7.2% of usage. So usually meta weapons have a higher percentage of usage, at least in modern times. But if we consider Vigor's entire history, the 249 is just a standard meta weapon, as the HBAR and the SG-1, following their first couple of nerfs, did also nestle right around that same range of around the upper 5%. Moving to the next major question, how did the EWIM overhaul infect counters? Well, looking at starter guns as a category, they only went down by about 1.14%, which is not great and is also not as big as predicted. So the likeliness is that EWIM overhaul has decreased the amount of people that spend their time in the beginning parts of the game thus decreasing the reported size of new players that are going to be caught by frequency. But it hasn't decreased the number of new players, and it also hasn't really created a situation that's alarming. Really, all it's done is let people get their hands on the more dangerous weapons in the game a little bit sooner, but not by large margins. Um, starter guns, really, if we're looking at them as an entire category, they're going from just over 20% to just under 20%. And this is really no cause of alarm and just doesn't matter, honestly, statistically wise. Finally, it's time to address the big question. How successful was the machine gun overall? And probably more apt, was it too successful? Well, we should start by addressing the problem. Before this update, MGs were the least used category, below even pistols, clocking in at only 4.6% of all usage. This means that the VZ58P alone had more usage than every single MG in the game combined. Next problem was that ARs are simply used too much. The 10 ARs that are in the game make up one-sixth of all guns in the game, and they make up 43% of frequency. They are simply too often used. So the problem now understood, let's look at what happened. Well, to start, ARs lost 15.1% across the board, with the majority of this decrease coming from the M16 and the AKM, who both lost 3% individually. This decrease is felt universally though, from the 74k to the G3, all of them got at least a marginal decrease. But to hyperfocus on the M16 and the AKM, it is without question that their decrease can't really be viewed as a bad thing. These guns had clocked in 9% and 7% individually, but are now near 5. And as covered earlier, new guns of a category, which these two are included in, did not decrease by as large of a margin. So what does it mean? Well, there aren't less new players, there's just less of them pulling on the AKM and the M16, which is a net good. I, for a long time, have been a person who protects the AKM and the M16 from nerfs and things, largely because they felt like they were good starter weapons, but if it seems like new players are now pulling off across the entire category, the pressure and the weight on the M16 and the AKM just simply isn't what it used to be. So, it's just a net good. Next, the new AR percentage is still the most used category in the game. It makes up 28% of all usage, meaning that no, ARs are not dead, they aren't dying, 
that just other types of guns are actually being used in marginal percentages now. And that's a net good for the health of the game. This rapid drop-off of ARs has, of course, been followed by a rapid spike of the MGs, most of which being the M249 as I covered earlier. However, this increases across the board, making many MGs who previously had less than a single percentage, such as the RPK, who is now a 4% high usage. Overall, as a category, the MGs increased by 15%, just a touch less than the margin by which the ARs decreased. So what does this all mean from a balancing standpoint? Well, to put it simply, the devs achieved the goal of ending the AR-dominated gameplay. And honestly, I have no problem with that. AR-dominated gameplay has been the standard of Vigor for 12 seasons. Um, really, only in the preview build was SMGs considered slightly better. And by removing them from their kingship, we now are going to see more varied gameplay across the board. However, there are certainly caveats here, and there are certainly problems here. But if they continue at this rate of buffing one class of weapons a season and getting similar results, pure statistical balance is not only a possibility, but likely what will happen, um, as we will most likely see a situation where SMGs and really all types of weapons are around on equal footage, which really should be the goal in balancing. To conclude, I'd like to give my two cents on what changes I'd like to see. And that really would be an SMG buff. That is really what we need right now. Um, this is because statistically, they only pull off the 18% that they pull off due to starter guns. And I don't like that being the case. If they get a buff, it would increase pressure on players to play shotguns and traditional rifles, which also are both doing not great statistic-wise right now, in order to counter the SMG mains, because really that's just how life works. You need long-range rifles to outrange them, and you need shotguns to outdamage them in CQC. And this would just help frequency as a whole. It would take even more pressure off of ARs. It would make MGs less usable as the high versatility, high mobility SMGs, if buffed well enough could just make this entire meta pointless. And overall, I just think SMGs need to be the next move. And I understand there are definitely some people who are going to go, no, well, the ARs are plummeting. We need to save the ARs. I do not think we need to save the number one most used category in the game. They'll be fine. And if they're not fine, th they can live one season not at number one. Um, I, I would like to see more varied gameplay, and I'd rather not every single firefight just be two ARs blasting each other. And that's really what is a potential possibility if we do get an SMG buff. The data in its entirety will be in VSL's RI chat if you want to see it for yourself. And if you guys have any personal opinions based off the data, I would love to hear them and love to debate them. But that's really all I've got for you guys today. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.